All right, now, today we want to talk a little bit about speaking and singing. We hear about talking, this and that, say it, no, don't sing it, say it. But the question is, how do you talk? Do I talk like that? Watch what people are doing. Watch people, you know, squeezing the eyes, lifting the cheeks. Hello, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. People are trying all these different things, experimenting, trying to find the mask, the resonance. But all you really have to do is just talk, if you speak correctly. Now, if you speak some kind of dialect or you have a strong accent or something, there may be some problems. So, if you say, Dama la tazza caffè, io voglio andare nelle città per comprare qualche cosa per mangiare stasera. What kind of phonation is that? Some say, Ah, 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 ah. I could say, how are you today? How are you today? How are you today? How are you today? Let's go downtown and get something to eat. See, I'm saying, let's go downtown and get something to eat. Now, how am I speaking, though? It's very important how we speak. We must not speak through the nose. We mustn't say, Mama, 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 how are you today? It's so nice to be here. I have no room for my high notes if I do that. If I go, Mama, 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 there's no room. So I have to get out of this nasality, the, the so-called false mask down here, and find the true mask, which I find by closing this off. Bob, 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 Bob. Some people, uh, Lily Lehman wrote in her book to raise the soft palate up and forward, or to move the back wall of the nose forward. Uh, Leonard Warren used the pre-sneeze, oh, like this, and then he, of course he spoke this way all the time, like Sir John Gielgud. So. If I speak different ways, and then I want to use speech and singing, you can see that the way I speak is going to have an incredible effect on my singing. So let's say I do that, uh, that uh, pre-sneeze. I'm going to talk like this. How are you today? So nice to see you. Then I just talk. di bellezze diverse. Di bellezze diverse. E Bruna Floria. In other words, which way do I speak? This is the problem with the whole concept of speech and singing. Uh, speech level singing works great if, you, if you're doing pop music, it's not classical music, and you don't have to project the voice, and you don't have to worry about your breathing and all kinds of other things, and just say, you know, I mean, if I sing country music, think about it. If I sing country music, I say, hi, you did, sure, and I see you, and how am I going to sing that? Think about it. DT, there's my road ahead, DT, pay no mind what it said. All I'm doing is talking as if I were down in East Texas, where I, where I originally came from. But I went to Europe, you know, and everyone studies English in Europe. And when you speak English, if you speak any kind of, sometimes even so, sort of standard American, they don't always understand you. So you get in the habit of speaking very clearly and very distinctly with those people who wish to speak English. Sometimes it's a language you don't know. I've talked a lot with Hungarians and Bulgarians and Russians and people that were the language. I was not familiar with the language, so we spoke English. And of course, for them to understand me, I had to be speak very clearly and enunciate everything. If I talk like that, let's say, what, can I can I sing by just speaking like that? See, so I say, Now what if I'm sad? What if I'm happy? La donna mobile. I'm not singing and imitating my speech. I'm really trying to say those words on those notes. If I'm talking right there, where's my pitch? Hello, how are you? I have to find where my speech level is normally. I could talk down. Some people talk down here all the time. Now, if they get up and they want to talk uh, in singing, look how they talk. Ah, all of a sudden, it's very bad speech. So we have to breathe a certain way that sets this thing completely free. This whole apparatus here, throat, jaw, hyoid muscle, Tongue, root of the tongue, everything has to get loose like this. I take a breath and go. Now I'm going to say, to be or not to be, that is the question. But I'm going to say it behind this trilling tongue. 
To be or not to be, that is the question. So now I'm going to say, to be or not to be, that is the question. And then I go, to be or not to be, that is the question. How shall I speak then? So we have to say things in a way that is functional speech. If I'm talking like that day, and I'm talking like some New York, and I'm talking like this all the time, I'm going to go down and get some to eat. Well, I can talk any way I want to and get a lot of pitches that way. It could be that uh, some of them open up the, the high notes and some of them close off the high notes. So you have to so almost find out how you speak and where you're from. But the thing that's essential more than anything else is that you breathe in a way that sets us free. The, the way Caruso described his breathing in that book he wrote, it's got 32 pages, and he mentions breathing 60 times, and he talks about drawing the abdomen inward when you inhale. Lily Lehman said to jerk, to jerk the diaphragm inward, the belly inward, the abdomen, I think she said abdomen, jerk the abdomen inward, but right in some before you breathe. And now I'm going to speak. Hello, how are you today? So where does that put my speaking voice? See? So now I'm talking like that, right? E buona la mia tosca. E buona la mia tosca, ma credente al confessor. Ma credente al confessor. Right? So I say, if I'm going to say the words, how are you today? And I breathe, like they said to breathe, abdomen going in, breathe way down in your lower back and go. When I did that, my throat relaxed and every breath is an opportunity to re completely relax my throat and the root of my tongue. And now I can talk throatless, jawless, and tongueless, like this. Hello, how are you today? Do you understand? I'm not using anything. I'm not using any muscle except I breathe before I started talking. So I breathe. And then I'm going to say, uh, let's say, I'm going to go downtown and get something to eat. I'm going to go downtown and get something to eat. Now, can I use any place else? Oh, I'm going to go downtown and get something to eat. I can go to the town to get something to eat. Now I can talk anywhere I want to. And then I can use happy, sad, or angry. Am I happy? Oh, I'm going to go down town to get something to eat. I can't wait. I'm so hungry. Right? Or I could be angry also and talk like this all the time. You have to be careful what repertoire you do because a lot of this repertoire will make you uh, be too dramatic. And when you get too dramatic, how do you speak? Remember, angry does not always mean loud. I can be very quiet and very angry. So we, want, we don't want to confuse volume with color, what the Italians used to call timbre, which was color, hue, literally, hue of the, uh, the hue of the color, the, the slight changes. So if I go, I'm very happy to, get to see you, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. Oh, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. All I'm doing is talking, you understand? Hello. I could talk like this all the time, and a lot of singers do get the voice up there and sort of talk this way all the time. My own Domonica was that way. Domonica had a very uh, uh, unique way of singing. He studied with Malocchi, and he, uh, he, put, he used to demo, I studied with him for five months, and he did this sort of thing. Ah, 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 eh, 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 oh, 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 ah, 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 ah
Oh, I'm not really glad to see you give me a pain right where I don't want one. Or I'm angry. I know where you live and I'm coming after you. You better look out for me. From now on, we are enemies. All I'm doing is talking. So it's good sometimes to sit around and uh, sort of improvise. Make up music, make up words, say phrases, right? I'm sitting here looking at the table and I've got this huge uh, bookshelf over there just full of operatic scores. I'm telling you that, but I could have said it on pitch. I could have said, uh, oh, I've got a book stand over there just full of operatic sco scores and I, I probably don't know half of them that are there. Half of them I probably have sung, <laughs> right? At one time or another. And all of a sudden, I'm very happy to be talking to you. And it wouldn't, isn't, it's sort of nice to be, when we're all living in the quarantine period. Uh, today is what, April 23rd, 2020. We're right in the middle of the quarantine, and we're in quarantine, and it's so nice that I get to spend time with my wife, because I love her, and you can spend time with a better person. So how do we carry on conversations? I'm just talking like that. So this business of speaking, when you sing, is very, very, very efficient. Now, people who are taught to do this have trouble because we don't talk like that, do we? And some people are, are, are taught to do this. How are you? So nice. I'm going to squeeze my eyes up. I got my cheeks up. Now I'm going to talk like this all the time. See? If I sing it along and I'm saying, uh, How are you today? I'm living long so let me know why is that voice so ugly? As my old teacher Olga Reese used to say, singing is not organized noise. Organized noise is simply organized noise. It is not singing. Singing is music. Singing is soul. Singing is spirit. Singing is heart. So if I just find a way to get the notes, um, I'm, I'm not really singing unless I've got it attached to my, what I have my speaking voice attached to. If I call you on the phone and I know you well, and you pick up the phone and you say, hello. I said, what's the matter? Are you all right? What happened? You say, hello. I said, oh my gosh, what'd you do? Win the lottery? Your speaking voice constantly uh, carries with it emotional content. And that's another good thing about being a speaker, see, instead of a singer. I'm, uh, I'm confronting Carmen in the fourth act, and I'm sort of uh, reproaching her, see? So I say, it's say mal Carmen. You know, it's really bad of you to behave like this. How did I just say that? Let's say, I'm, I'm an actor. It's very, very bad of you, Carmen, to talk like this, to behave like this. This is not nice. Or he's more primitive and he kills people. He killed someone at home before he left home, which is why he joined the army. And now this woman doesn't realize it quite, but she's in danger. This is a psychopath, right? And he says, it's very, very bad of you, Carmen, to treat me like this. And he's sitting there coping with us. You know, these are interpretive things. But the point is, I'm talking. I'm saying all this. So I go, It's very bad of you to mock me, Carmen. Right? Uh, how should I say this? See, first I got to decide as an actor. First I got to decide as a biomechanical person, how am I going to breathe that sets my throat free? All right, so I'll breathe way down my lower back, and uh, I can use breath stop, huh, or I can just lean. Ah, uh, there are a lot of ways to get, to keep, once I get the breath down, there are a lot of ways to stop the breath from the diaphragm and not let it come back up in my throat. See, I said Delmonico stopped his ear. Uh, uh, uh. And then he talked like that, but he used to talk sort of high like this all the time, but he talked right there. Then when he sang, he'd say, And it was a great big old whopping Dramatic tenor, wonderful, wonderful voice. Um, it's interesting that when you speak, you can speak all these different ways, just as you can with your speaking voice, especially if you train it and you're educated, right? So let's say I want to imitate, and it, uh, yeah, I don't want to imitate, I want to, I want to speak Italian. Vogliamo parlare solamente l'italiano. So how do I speak? Where are my vowels? Ah, what if I close my mouth and say the words inside? <laughs> Where are those vowels? I'm going to go downtown and get something to eat. Where are those vowels? So if I have my tongue that loose, where does my phonation have to be? Ah, uh, ah, uh, and now i got to talk there. I'm going to go downtown and get something to eat. We 
would you like to come along with me or shall we just stay home and cook something? And I'm just talking. I'm not even having to worry about singing. So I'm 82 years old now. The point is, if I can still talk, I should be able to sing. If you can talk as a young singer, usually the only problem you have is you've got to figure out some way to breathe to keep your instrument free. And that is the problem. Most people try to sing without breathing, and they do. Let's say I lift my soul palate like that. Now, what does that do with my speaking voice? See? How am I going to talk to you now if I sing like that? Just think about it. So I'm singing, uh, you know, something so nice and sweet. I'm having to do all this extra stuff and blow more air than I should, and it's completely wrong for the music, and I can't talk to, to, to this, young, this young lady. Like that the whole time. But somebody said I have to raise my soft palate. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can say, how are you today? So nice to be here. I'm talking to me, me. I say, I'm a poet. In povertà mia lieta, shalora gran signore. Why can't I just say the words? See? What about German? What if I'm singing in German? I'm singing, die weiss es lieder dieser Knaben. Die weiss es lieder dieser Knaben. Sei die mir ins Herz gegraben. Shall I really say those words like this? Or like this? Or like that? What about keeping the soft palate raised up here? How about like that? And now I've got to sing. Device has ladies on a knob and said he means how to go. Is it enough to get the notes? If that's organized noise, is that okay? What are we supposed to be doing when we portray a character? And we're, aren't we just supposed to be speaking and talking? Huh? Think about it. So I've got, uh, um, I'm going to say, in, in povertà mi lieto, shala la gran signore. Right? In poverty, I'm happy and I'll pretend that I'm a great lord, he says. And I'm going to say that. In povertà mi lieto, shala la gran signore. All right. So I take a deep breath. I stop the breath here like the Monaco and go, and then I'm going to talk here. In povertà mia lieta, shara da gran signore. On the other hand, I could do what Lily Lemon said, which is stop the breath on the chest. So I take a deep breath, and I go, In povertà mia lieta, shara da gran signore. Remember, what do they have in common? Speech. I'm speaking, and I'm not talking like that. I'm not, I'm not changing the shape of my throat. I'm not pressing my larynx down, holding it down. I'm not pressing my tongue down in the back. I'm not raising my tongue either. I'm not doing anything. I go, and I'm going to talk right there. We have to identify the mask, identify the instrument. If I go, yum, 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 it's completely the wrong resonance, and nobody will hear me over a big orchestra in a big theater. I can talk there, by the way. You know, I'm an American. Of course I can talk on my nose. I'm from Texas originally. I can really, really talk on my nose. And my family was off from uh, Ireland and Scotland. So we could really talk on our noses. But should I? See? So identify the mask by not doing M resonance. I do... Mm. If I go M and then close my nose, watch. Mm. Where'd my resonance go? It jumps from here to here. Mm. Ah, 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 and that's where I'm going to talk. See? Ba, 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 now my nose is closed. And now is the winter of our discontent, right? Now is the winter of our discontent. And I can talk all day like that, and my voice is sitting up here in the resonance. And it, it gonna, when you sing like that, and you have a lot of experience, I sang 62 roles myself. Uh, for, you know, I don't know, 45 years, and the point is that you find out which ones are big in the back of the theater. You have colleagues who are incredibly successful, and they sound, you, when you're sitting next to them, you, you, you think, well, it's not that loud, it's not that big. Holy cow, people come back and go crazy when they, when they, when they hear these voices in the back of the theater. I heard Aaron Berger in Hamburg, Aaron Berger had, had, was a light little soubrette, uh, a little soubrette soprano. She did all the Enas, you know, Anina and Despina and all those parts. And, uh, and when I heard her in the back of the theater, I couldn't believe it. Her voice came across like this.
See? So, uh, it's interesting when you hear someone who has immense power in the voice, and like Birgit Elsa, and then you stand next to her while she's singing, and the voice sounds perfectly normal. Hello, how are you today? Right? So she's not yelling. Yelling doesn't work, and all this form creation and all this stuff. You know, what if I yawn? Oh, now I've got a yawn inside. Is that the way I should talk? What should, what should I do? Therefore, God, thank God, be the yawn. Do I really talk like that? Oh, therefore, God, thank God, be yawn. See, what is it that I'm trying to do? So there is a strange thing that if I just speak with a big air column under it, big air bucket underneath, uh, the voice carries like a rocket. People do a lot of covering. They go, ah, If you do that, believe it or not, people now think you have to do that. Well, if I'm in my nose, I'm going, ma, 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 I got no room, so I have to modify, I have to do something. But can I talk that way? Yes. I can even talk that way if I want to, so I've been trying to demonstrate. But how should I talk? Take a deep breath. Do something to set your throat completely free. And then talk with a free throat. And now, how do I do that? Do I need to then do this cover modification thing or not? See? So I go, breathe. Ah, how are you today? So nice to see you. Ah, how are you today? So nice to see you. Let's go down to get something to eat. Do I really want to say, uh, how are you today? So nice to see you. Well, no. And then come back down and try to speak normally. So the truth is you should get your voice in position or in placement or in the concept of the mask or in head voice or whatever terminology you want to use before you ever go to the high notes. And then you do not have to suddenly do something in your throat. The first two rules of the bell first two rules of the bell concert school were no action in the throat and no change in mission. If I cover or pontify, I make an action in my throat. So I'm breaking the first rule of the bell concert. So if I do nothing, do nothing. How are you today? I don't to modify you. You can understand my words and every word I'm saying. Just by talking. I'm just talking. What are you doing? So I'm breathing like, like crazy in order to develop bigger drums, because the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. And I want that sound, of course, to be big and big. The other thing about the, about the mo modification is, believe it or not, they'll sound nice and big and fat, but they really very often don't penetrate the orchestra the same way. Uh, when you hear Wagner singers, really good Wagner singers, you don't hear them modifying so much when they go to the high notes, because the voice doesn't carry. It won't put it, it don't it won't penetrate. If I can go la 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 that vo that position carries like crazy into a theater uh, through a big orchestra. I mean I know I've sung my singer and Potsy Fall and Flying Dutchman and you know I've sung some uh, Queen of Spades and Don Carlo and a lot of these big operas and you you uh, you after a while you find out what what penetrates the orchestra, what carries them back to the theater, particularly big theaters. Right? So I'm going to figure out some way to talk. And I'm going to try to talk not using this. It's almost like a ventriloquist sometimes. You say, oh, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. And if I could talk like that and not use my jaw at all, the, actually the resonance goes up here above my, above my uh, false, false mask, above this, the cheek nose area, and goes up and hits me up here in my bald head. How are you doing? It's so nice to see you. See, I don't really have to do that all the time, and I sort of do that to modify all the time. See? So, we have some words we want to sing. Uh, you know, you got. Why shouldn't I just say that? What? I always use uh, the cabaletta from Lucia. Right? Why can't I just say those words? And not do any more. Uh, all of what I've been using now is what you would call middle power. I don't talk as loud as I can, and I don't talk as soft as I can. But if I wanted to speak very softly, I would do the same thing. I would talk like this. Hello. Ah, 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 ah. Right? 
Limba dagli occhi pieni di malia, ora sei tutta mia. Do I need to talk loud? Do I need to talk louder? <laughs> the der is the big thing. If I'm doing a, a Siegmund, and I do, Ein Schwert verhieß mir der Vater, ich fände es in höchster Not. Do I use more than that? Do I use more throat? What do I do? Do I, do I try to make a bigger megaphone? What do I really do? Do I yawn? Nothing. I either have the voice for that music or I shouldn't sing it. But to start manipulating, trying to make a bigger sound is a disaster and those singers that are doing it uh, are absolutely paying a terrible price. They're all losing their voices. All they do is this to make it bigger. I sang as a bass in college, and although I was using a lot of speech method already then, I was doing it in my chest register. And so I was singing like that. See? But that's also not normal speech. Why would I talk like that? See, why would I talk? In Italian, it's ingolata in the throat. Why in the world would I talk like this? Why don't I go, and that's my speaking voice. The minute I do nothing, I'm a tenor. I'm not a bass. I'm not a baritone. I'm not even baritonal. I'm a real, you know, I'm a real sort of middleweight tenor, and I can talk up there all day long. You've got. Uh, Is that enough voice for boy? And if it's not enough voice, I'm not going to sing the role. I'm not going to shout, and I'm certainly not going to start distorting uh, and, and, and making those artificial covered sounds because someone said, oh, but that's wide open. You know what? It's not wide open. You want to hear wide open? <laughs> that's wide open. If I do nothing, <laughs> so in the old days they called it passing. The voice passed. They didn't cover it. They just let the resonance pass into the head register. Now in Italy, they're using girare, turn. But the truth is, the voice will do it by itself without you doing anything if you leave this totally inactive and make everything happen down here. I mentioned Delmonico here, but you can go down the list of people and the way they and where they lean. Pavarotti always leaned down here on his belly like this. Ah, ah, ah. All right, if I talk now down there, where does it place my voice? See? Then why can't I just talk anywhere? Well, you can probably pretty much if you would just talk. The secret is to take a breath, to have a big breath down in your lower back and go, ah, uh, hi, how are you today? So nice to see you. Now I'm right there on the spot, uh, uh, right above my navel, that close to my navel. And I go, how are you today? So nice to see you. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk there. In van, in van, ascondo la mia vera tortura. I can sing any place if I'll just lean. And of course, those of you who do yoga know about chakras, which are points of meditation, but you can also sing by using your chakras. This is one of them, right? The navel is one of them, and Pavarotti was nearly on his navel. Uh, there, there, some singers sing up here, and you can talk there. Hello, how are you today? It's so nice to be here. I think I'll go downtown and get something to eat. So I'm going to sing. <laughs> Why can't I just talk up on that on that chakra if I want to? Or the third eye, the famous third eye, right there, right? All I'm doing is talking on chakra points. And then you get fancy and you do, that's Hatha Yoga, those, but if you do Kundalini Yoga, then you do the opposite side also, and the thing goes up and down the back. I used to watch Krista Ludwig sing all the time, and she would lean her voice, uh, her uh, breath, right between her shoulder blades, and she'd sing like that. Ah, 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 ah,
no, there's no reason why you can't sing that. Cosa quello per me pare sono la cantata di torno di torno vero. But the one thing they all have in common is I'm just talking. I'm not uh, doing all this, uh, 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 all this stuff. I don't do that, right? I think at 82, I wouldn't be singing at all if I did all that stuff. But this way, if I can at least still talk at 82, uh, if I can get a breath, I can go, you know, they ask the famous old singer, how are you today? And he says, the voice, the voice is good, but the legs, the legs. And it's true. Other parts of your body start to feel, you know, they're starting to sound as fresh, and they don't have the stamina they had. Even if you get a tone right, how do you keep getting tones right if your legs are going like that? So, so uh, the idea is to make it last as long as possible. And by doing that, you just talk. You can also talk in several different voices. We talked about, I did a video called The Mystery of the, of the Three Voices, but you can go, ah, 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 that little voice there I can sing, absolutely, if I want to, sing. And I'm still talking, but now I'm talking in a little voice like that. See? Some of those sounds carry better than some of those bigger sounds. And the worst thing you can do is get the chest voice working and then start talking like that, you know. Uh, those don't carry worth a darn. They really don't. You want the ones that are free, that get a response here. Ah, ha, 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 ha. A lot of staccatos. If I, if I sing staccato, ah, ha, 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 he, he. remember I'm breathing down my lower back all the time. So I breathe in my lower back, do a staccato, go, ah, ha, 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 ha. it's on my sternum. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Now, what if I talk there? Ah, ha, 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 ha. See that? So there's no reason why I can't just stay any place and, and sing there if I want to. Right? <laughs> If that's not big enough, I'm not going to sing that music. That's Otello. I was offered Otello when I was 26 and I accepted it and got an injury and couldn't do it. And that's the only time I've ever messed with it or considered it. I, I, got, a, I got a chance to sing it, but I was always, probably just sang it twice. And he's a great singer. I sang it twice and didn't sing it anymore. He was a smart guy. You know. So, uh, you will find that if you can just talk and then learn how to talk on pitch, you'd be amazed what you can do, what, what the voice itself will do. It'll do all kinds of things, right? The secret, however, is in the breathing. If you do, just read the Caruso book or read my book. I've got a book called Fundamentals of Great Vocal Technique, and basically all I do is quote the great singers of the past and as many great singers as I've talked to in my lifetime. And uh, every one of them talked about breathing, and they, they, most of them were very concerned with breathing in the back all the time. Uh, Leonard Warren held his front of his, uh, his whole entire front of his body dead still, what, what he called the static diaphragm. And you hold it dead still, like that. And then he did the priest's knees, and he did that. So now I can talk to it. I, I, can, I can absolutely use that as a technique, right? <laughs> I'm just doing that, see? The, uh, this, this video, I hope, will help convince some people that, they, that if you have a voice, you don't need to make one. If you really have a voice, it's, it's going to be better than any one that you can make. And the only thing you're allowed to do, because you're a witness from it, is breathe. So you want more sound, you have to get a bigger drum. The bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. If I, if I have a small drum, I'm going to have a small sound. See? Even a snare drum goes rat-a-tat-tat. And they got big heads on them. You take that big head off and put it on a big, deep Congo, Congo drum, Africa drum, it goes boom, boom. And the sound gets big and fat. Well, that's the way your drums work. You've got a vibrator up here. If you want more sound, you've got to breathe deeper. So then you realize that uh, Caruso was doing the hour and a half walk, breathing exercise, uh, to the end of his life. He did it for his secretary wrote. He was still doing it to, to, at the very end of his life. And uh, Helga Rosanger did three hours of yoga every day. Robert Merrill did two hours of yoga. Uh, Caruso and, and uh, Franco Corelli were ocean swimmers. You think about, go through, they had Fritz Wunderlich was a, was a French horn player. You see me go through, Benjamin Ogidi was a saxophonist. You think of all those possibilities to develop the breathing which develops 
the, the, the voice. And all of those voices got bigger and bigger and bigger as they had a lifetime in singing. They all ended up with great big sounds and survived and never had vocal problems. The, the ones that start using this a lot then get in, get in vocal trouble. So if you're going to sing, you want to make your easy attacks, you want to come in easily on, you know, you've got... Uh, uh, il tuo bel cielo nuovo rinaldi, le dolci brezze del pa. You know, Caruso said never change your, the shape of your mouth when you go to a high note. Remember what mouth means in Italian, la bocca. It doesn't just mean this. It means this. He said never change the shape of it when you go to a high note. Of course, everybody's covering and modifying. But when I go to a high note and I don't change the shape of it, I get la, ah, ah, I'm talking. I'm saying, ah, eh, e, oh, oh, how are you today? I'm just talking. And if I don't change anything, then you know what the rub is? You, if you don't breathe down in your back and get a breath stop working for you, you can't do this. So it's all breath. Then there are a lot of breath stops. One is Gar Manuel Garcia's miniature cough. <coughs> ah, 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 and you leave the breath, lean right where you feel that coughing pulse. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, Tito Schipa and Claudio Muzio side, ah, but they side down and in right here. So if I do that, I go, ah, 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 ah. I'm still talking, ah, 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 ah. See, so the idea is that you can talk with pretty much any of the breath stops, but you got to have, some, you got to have one. <laughs> some something must prevent the breath from coming back up in your throat. Uh, they asked Adelina Patti. Uh, what did she think about when she sang? She said, don't sing breathy. That's all she knew. So this is one of the old exercises, this one. Oh, you today, I'm fine. I'm just talking, but I'm talking in a way that doesn't leak any air at all. So I'm like a contained air instrument. And it drives the doctor crazy because the doctors have been taught the air has got to come through the vocal cords to vibrate them, and, I'm, and they're right. But the, air, the amount of air that gets through there is so tiny that, that uh, it won't even move. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a tissue paper. It's a Kleenex. It won't even move the paper. It's so... And then uh, Gottlob Frick, the famous bass in Germany, we were talking about it, he said, the whole idea is, is to sing like you're underwater and you don't want to make any bubbles. So I go... Ah, I talk without leaking. I breathe way down. I use some kind of, a, like Benny Menegili used a little miniature song. Ah, ah, sing like that. Ah, ah, he goes, uh, Now, if that little miniature falsetto attachment Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, can be done quickly, ah, and get you attached to your diaphragm, then you can just talk. Got it? All right, I hope this helps everybody. It's something to think about anyway. And if, and first of all, work on the, on the speaking voice so that the, the, the instrument is completely free. And you do that by breathing down. When I breathe, my legs goes vertically down. And that's the open, the open throat is the vertical drop, not yawning. Yawning is spreading. Any of those things that you do up there in the throat, that's spreading the throat. We want the throat to open, not spread. So I go, now I have access to my air bucket. And now I can just talk. See? Ah, uh, hello, how are you today? Hello, how are you today? Hello, how are you today? There's nothing to it really except just speaking. Okay? Okay, bye.